Welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this Wednesday, September 8th. I apologize for being a couple minutes late today, but it is good to be with you. That was Mark Miller's uh, A Child of God, and uh, that was a virtual uh, choir that was singing that. Um, and so it is good to start off the day with all of you today. Today we're looking at Luke 11. And I'm going to be reading uh, verses 37 through 30, through 40, 37 through 40. So um, if you want to get your Bibles out and we'll, we will dive into Luke 11. But let me say good morning to all of you. Good morning, Priscilla and Daniel. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Barbara and Margaret. Welcome. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Good morning, Celia and Susan. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Praying that Jim gets to come home today. Um, holding Michelle, Michelle and Donna. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer today. And good morning, Betty and Ingrid. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Good morning, Vinette and Georgiana. Welcome, holding you in prayer today. And good morning, Renetta and Myrna. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. And good morning, Lisa and Rick. Good to see you both. I'm glad you're here as we start this day. So today our devotion comes from Luke 11 and it is entitled, Don't Just Focus on the Page. Remember to get out into the margins. Don't just focus on the page. Remember to get out into the margins. So, um, our, um, as you turn to Luke 11, my name is Cindy Stopper. And um, again, I am sorry. I, this is the first time this has ever happened. I did not set my alarm last night. I have no idea. But the good news was I actually woke up exactly at 6.30. <laughs> I just needed a couple more mi earlier minutes. But anyway, it's good to be with you. Uh, I serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. It's in, um, we start each day with this time together. So let's dive in, uh, take a look at Luke 11, uh, 37 through 40. Luke 11, 37. While he was speaking, a Pharisee invited him to dine with him. 
So he went in and took his place at the table. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not wash before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, clean on the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools did not the one who made the outside make the inside also so give for alms those things that are within and see everything else will be clean for you Don't just focus on the page. Remember to get out into the margins. This comes from Bob Goff's book, Live in Grace, Walk in Love, which we've been walking through this past year. And this is what he says. He says, Jesus didn't do things by the book. He wasn't beholden to the playbook the rest of humanity seems to be living by. Whenever I'm reading or writing on occasion, I try to stay inside the lines. I mean, the rule for writing and reading is to stay inside the margins where all the words are. The words sometime, somebody poured over getting their point across or their poem in perfect meter with clever rhymes. We don't really notice the space on the edges of the page. When I say Jesus didn't go by the book, I mean, he pretty much spent all his time in the margins. Instead of being enamored by the fanfare and the well-formed arguments of the Pharisees and religious people, he went to the places everyone else seemed to forget. What if we decided to fill up the margins with our love instead? What would it look like for you to share a meal with someone who really makes you feel uncomfortable? Or give them hope and a listening ear? That's the stuff we do in the margins. When I feel a little listless or restless, it's tempting to go straight for the words that I know, the ones in the middle of the page that are comforting and reassuring. But when I look at Jesus, I see someone going outside the lines to the poor, the orphans, the widows, and the prisoners. Those are the ones that Jesus set his sights on. Sometimes we need to trade the words we've known for the margins where God calls us. So today's question is what rules or expectations can you break to love people on the margins? Right. Um, It is interesting how much we want to stay in the places that we know, uh, the places where the words make sense, the places where we know what the expectations are, and we can we can um, acclimate ourselves well because because it's 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 our comfort place, right? And. Uh, we do this with church, you know. I, I know that I've preached this before, probably many times. Um, you know, when we come to church, we wanna be comforted. We wanna be around people that we know. We wanna spend time checking in with the people that we know. Uh, seldom do we go across the aisle to, to meet someone new. Unless, of course, they make us feel comfortable and then maybe we'll do that. But if they make us feel uncomfortable, then we'll stay in our seat. 
and it's the same in our lives as we're going through our days. Um, so I'm reminded of uh, my boys um, went on a mission trip, and I usually went with them, but I didn't go on this one, and it was to New York City. And we didn't do we didn't do like build a house mission trips. We did um, how how do you get to know people that are different than you than yourself? And so they were they would work in thrift shops or in soup kitchens. And one of the nights they were told they were given like um, five dollars, and they were to go and use that five dollars to get something to eat but something that they could share with another person um, that that was living on the street or or just somebody uh, that, that they didn't know. Now, they, they weren't left on their own because, of course, there were chaperones around, uh, people from the, from the program that knew the community well. But, man, they came home and they said, that was so hard. I'd like to say that my kids were like, Mom, that was great. I learned so much. But they didn't. They said that was really hard to have to, first of all, to get a meal for $5. How hard is that? And then to take that money and to, to ask someone if they could sit down and talk with them and have a meal. And um, my, both of my boys are incredibly introverted. So, you know, having to engage in conversation with somebody that's very different but they did it and and I'd like to say that you know as they go through their lives they will have that and there will be more opportunities where they'll be have, they'll have to be pushed out into the margins to experience something different than what is normally on their page now that doesn't mean that it is always about sitting with someone who who is without housing at the time, right? Um, it can be all different things. It could be maybe going into a hospital and and sitting with someone who is very sick and that's uncomfortable and we'd rather not do that because it it hurts to watch somebody you love struggling and there's something inside of us that wants to run in the other direction, and yet still we go. Um, there are places in all of our lives where we have to go that don't feel comfortable. And I don't mean uncomfortable as in dangerous. I just mean they are different than where we would normally go. And it's often the places that I don't wanna go, the places where you know, it'd be easier to stay home on my couch than to go to that place. Uh, those are the places where I learn the most about God. Those are the places where I encounter God more fully. Those are the places that shape and reform me and remind me who I am as a child of God. Because it helps me to see that that person as well is a child of God. And that's ultimately what each person needs to hear, that they are loved, that they are a beloved child of God. No matter what the world around us may say, no matter what, what um, even the church at times has said, you are a beloved child of God and there is nothing I mean, this is what my, I mean, I love that Mark does that. There is no thing and no one, no thing and no one that can separate you from the love of God. So, the Pharisees wanted Jesus to stay on the lines of the page. But that's not where he went. And friends, it's not where we're supposed to be either. So today, where are those margins that God is calling you to go to? Let us pray. God, 
you give us this amazing model of your love. That you would send us your son. That we might know how to live. It, it's so hard to understand that even now the church and we are the church, that we keep missing the message. We have on the pages of our Bible witness to the way that you lived and loved outside of the margins. And yet still we stay in our places of comfort. Move us, Lord, this day. Move us out beyond where we feel comfortable. Help us to see one another as we claim the title that we are a child of God. Help us to see that they are a child of God as well. And even the times when it doesn't feel comfortable, help us to sit and listen and offer a meal or maybe just a smile and a kind word. Lead us, Lord, that we might live that radical love in which you loved us. We ask all of this in your precious name as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, go. Go out into the margins. Let's get off the page today, my friends. God loves you, and so do I. Have a blessed day, and I will see you at 6.30 tomorrow. I will be on time. <laughs> Thank you, friends. Bye.